You're listening to a Time Machine podcast. Old movie Time Machine. An adventure through time and or space. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Old Movie Time Machine. This is the show in which we watch color motion picture films made in the old US of A between the years of 1945 and 1965. What are we doing with these movies, you guys? We're looking at them as windows into the past. We throw these windows open, we crawl through them, and we take a poke around at the world beyond the window. And while we do that, we ask some critical questions, such as the people that we see here beyond the window. Who are these people? What are their habits? How are they treating each other? What decisions are they making? And why? And also, in arguably the most important aspect, what are they wearing and what do their living rooms look like? And then at the end of the show, we climb back through the window to modern times and we answer the final, vital, ultimate question on behalf of all of you here in the early 21st century, which is... Hey, you guys, this movie that we just talked about for a couple hours, uh, the world beyond the window and all that, et cetera, et cetera. Do we keep watching this thing? Do we keep showing this to others, watching it for ourselves, trying to pull something from it? Or is it empty? Is it merely a cipher, a vacuum? Is there nothing there to contribute? And if so, do we just chuck it? We will find out. Oh, and there's champagne because it's New Year's, you guys. We're celebrating the new year. Who am I talking to? Great question. Who am I? Even better question. I'm your host through time and or space, Justin Zeppa, joined as ever by my international panel of experts at being human in the early 21st century, and also the smartest people that I know. Starting on my left, as almost ever, Catherine Sherlock. Welcome back, Catherine. Hello. Great to have you to your left. No, Catherine, (laughs) I don't want to hear it. Sorry. To your left, the one, the only, the inimitable, Shrishma Nike is in the house. Hey, Shrish. Hey, guys. What's Shrishma. up? Shrishma. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. No, I am walking no. all over everybody. It's great to have you. It is Nope, we got to move along. To, be to your left. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. What were we just talking about? About a, a difficult woman archi- archetype, yes, right? Yes, I am. There she is, God Shrishma Nike, <laughs> making her voice heard, right? Absolutely. Sitting to your left and across the ocean, my sister and yours, Carolyn Narrows. Hey, sis. Hey there. Hey, great to have you. My pleasure. No, it was, yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're done. That's enough out of you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> have you not learned anything in this year, Justin, that you can't talk over the women? The women will talk over you. Uh, bl- I edit these shows. Right. I'm well That's aware true. of the perils of trying to talk over everybody. It does not work. And I will lose every single time. Exactly. Yes. Uh, I've also learned that these (laughs) these intros, there are a lot of moving parts to them. You'll have noticed over the course of the season that uh, they change, they morph, they come in and out of order. and, And it's just a matter of making sure we tick all the boxes. So, you know, we got the window, we got the era, artifacts. Uh, if you're part of the the boom room, if you didn't hear about the artifacts, you guys, you mean you need to join us on the Patreon, right? It's the boom room. The link is in the show notes. Follow that. Give us $2 a month and you'll get twice the content. That's what we call a plug in the middle of the show. Just a, oh yeah, exactly. Yep. Why not? Bang for your buck, guys. That's right. Two bucks. We have so much bang for their measly buck. We've got twice the bang as they're getting on this free feed right now. But you just got to go over there and check it out, you guys. Check it out. One month. Give us one month and $2. And you can have... Sometimes it's three times. I I know. (laughs) And you can find a two-hour and 45-minute episode of Ghostbusters. (laughs) Lucky you. Uh, Great episode, by the way. Classic. Classic app. Yes. Carolyn's Choice. We do that sometimes, you know. Coming up next, by the way, Shrisma's Choice in a a couple few weeks. Where do y'all want to go? With my choice. You were going to ask us? Your choice. Well, this is interesting. Uh, we've never done this where you're, uh, the person in question is polling. I mean, like, this is a totally selfish option for you. But so it's very generous of you this holiday season. 
I just want to give you guys, you know, what you want. I want to watch something that you enjoy watching, okay. something that you really like. So you'll bring an enthusiasm. Understood. I don't care what it's about. We can go all over the place, you know? Okay. okay. Catherine, what do you want Trisha to talk about? I think I'd be happy to just watch, yeah, pretty much whatever you find interesting. It's a... Uh, it's insight, a great way to, it's an insight into your mm, mind and that's what moves you exactly we're going to be parsing your and that means psychology. i can judge you yeah 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 like, this is <laughs> purely <laughs> oh did i not put that at the front of the show this is clear this is a show with a lot of judgment that happens yeah, in that's it. true that's true yeah. bunch of judge judy's here court is in, is in session all right all right um guys we're talking about a little motion picture that we like to call, as does the movie studio, uh, likes to call "An Affair to Remember," nineteen fifty-seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guys, before we get into this, it's confession time. Oh, I do. I think we'll all agree. I do a pretty, pretty solid job of hosting yes. this program, right? Yes. On occasion. <laughs> Even I get a little sleepy. <laughs> and so this leads me to my confession, which is, look, I kind of fell asleep in and out. I was kind of nodding off during the first hour of this movie. I've seen the last hour. I've seen this whole movie. But it was just 100 years but ago. You've seen, yeah, I was going to say, you must have seen it before. Yes. But watching it again with, with our fresh eyes, the lens that we've been using, you know, seeing it through that lens, totally different experience, of course. So I'm going to need the group's help. This is a great end of the season, I think, or the end of the year. It's not the end of the season because the show goes on, but this is a great end of the year way. The team bands together to bail out the first half of the show about two human beings who meet each other. And am I good so far? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. they fall in love with each other. Mm -hmm. And then... They start their own little, we do it on the show sometimes, a promise list. They make some promises. Mm. Will they keep them? Mm. You guys are going to have to tell me. No, no, no. I saw the end of the movie. I know what happens. I know what happens. And I saw parts. It's just a little cloudy, all right? It's a little foggy out at sea on the cruise ship that these two meet. Isn't that right? Cruise ship? Yes. Yep. It's a cruise ship. I, That's right. I think, Justin, you can queue up. <laughs> Catherine reading my one line review for okay, you. It okay, might clear okay. some All things right. up for you. <laughs> Listen, okay, let's just let's do okay. one line reviews. Uh Catherine will be reading Carolyn's. This is a pre pre-arranged situation, but Carolyn wants to hear her review read by Catherine. I understand she should be reading all the reviews, really. Uh, <laughs> right. No offense to you, Shrish, but of no, course, you okay. do a great job. But I mean, I think we can all agree that yes. Catherine is the hammer for a reason. So we're going to start with her and then also end with her. So Catherine, what is Carolyn's one-line review of 1957's Cary Grant's Deborah Kerr's An Affair to Remember? Okay. It's a melodramatic affair developed by... Oh, can I just do this again? You know, this again. is me. I can't read things out yeah, yeah, when I'm no. tired. Sorry. As many takes as you can. Can I swear? Of course. Can we do outtakes? Yeah, of course. We no, did we that do. before. That the was outtakes, funny. we just leave them in. That's, oh, nah, is this no, no. the whole thing? Getting, oh, wait. No, nah, no, you're good. You're fine. Right. We'll a leave, melodramatic. We'll leave Sorry. <laughs> Fucking hell. Leave it all. Can I? Can, yeah. you just, can you just stop it? Now? Okay. Yep. And go. A melodramatic affair developed on a transatlantic voyage between two seemingly middle-aged people who leave their more established and stable partners to pursue love without money, only to be thwarted by the hazards of New York traffic. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wow. Nice. These neat are very good. Every, both of you. Well done, both Why of you. Why do you this think is I a didn't great read it? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. It's a team I mean, effort. <laughs> incredibly accurate. And incredibly detailed. It's perfect, but we got to fill in the gaps somewhere. Strish, what are you bringing to the table? What's your one line review of an affair to remember? Or do you have one? I do. Dish it. Um, <laughs> so, what I originally thought was a Bond movie um, turned out to be. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you she saw tuxedos. <laughs> And was right. like, hey, I mean, an affair to remember, like, you know, a time to kill. Like, it just kind of It does flowed. kind of sound, okay. No, I, it and it does kind of start out <laughs> like an, an old bond. It really bada, does. Bada, 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 bada. 
Can we do a walking bomb from do here to there? Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what I was originally excited, what what would I say? What did I? Say? You thought uh, it was a Bond, Bond movie. So, uh, what I originally thought was a Bond movie, and yeah. I was excited about. Um, yeah. I was quickly disappointed by this um, boring love story. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, all right, okay, but you you went in with all the wrong. That's true. You were framing up, this like, for a Bond. You were yeah, framing you were, yourself you were for like excitement and car chases and guns and shit. Here. And you're getting a, you're getting cars. Was there was a car off, off screen. <laughs> you don't see it. So, yeah. Okay. Fi- hey, great. I think you did great. Thank you. Uh, my one line review is I think this starts on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make a confession? Sure. Oh. Uh-oh. While we're thinking, Conf- while we're talking you need a about. Confession theme. Mis- confession. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Confessions of old movie time machine. Um, my confession is I very much did watch this all the way through and did not fall asleep. Uh, oh. But well my, done. I had never watched it before. And yeah. I honestly have always kind of avoided this film. Why? Um, the only real reference to it that I ever, I've ever had historically in my life is from Sleepless in Seattle. Yep, there it is. Right. Mm. So, I, and you know, I just, there's that part where they're talking about that she's on the couch and she can't get up. But yeah. Like, I mean, there's so like, I only know it from those scenes. So I actually was surprised when I watched it and I was like, had no idea this started on a boat. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sleepless in Seattle, by the right. way. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> anyway, it was a like, long while. I actually was sort of, uh, I'm not like charmed is not the right word, but I was like, oh, this really is very, actually much more lighthearted than I thought it would be. The, the first hour part. is a straight up, like, it's, it's near, yeah. near farcical comedy. Yeah, right. It's doing stuff on the ship. Okay. So. Ish. Save it. We're going to come back right. to this. All right, right. We'll come back to it. Uh, that was my one line review. That I think this. St- I think there's a it starts on a boat. Dot dot dot. Right. Trails off. Okay. Disease. You know. I think that smart. was your best okay. one yet. Thanks mm. so much. And finally, mm. the moment we've all been waiting for, Catherine Sherlock. Do you have a one line review of an affair to remember? Well, I have a confession to make. <laughs> <laughs> confession. I watched the entire thing yeah. and then fell asleep right afterwards, and then have been fuzzy all day. So. No. Okay. Because my brain is mush. Okay. Um, but I have seen this a lot. It's a, a favorite okay. of mine. Just think there's a lot to it. I mean, it is a film of two halves. Um, and what I would say is a comparison to that piece of dull crap we watched the other day that was apparently a romantic film. White Christmas we're talking about? No. Oh, Bell Book and Candle? No. Oh, all that heaven allows. Yeah. Come on. That was Come so on. dull. All right, all right, all right. Now, honestly, you put these two side by side. That's yeah. true. Now, this is a romantic That's film. True. Right? Fair. And, right, you know, it, it, it does have great cracks, like chemistry. Mm-hmm. Wardrobe is like top. That's true. Her mm-hmm. gown's yes. fabulous. But yes, there is tragedy. It's, you know, love laughs tragedy. It really is. It's also a movie filled with. <clears throat> Mostly decent people mm. kind of doing mm-hmm. the right thing. Yes. Which is bizarre. Actually, for the right reasons. Yeah. Well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm just not accustomed to it at all. I don't see this in real life or in fiction very often. Yeah. So, But it, it is like uh, the character of Nicky Ferranti actually stepped up. You know, he's he changed his moral compass because he was yeah. clearly a bit of a boop 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 mm. okay. boy around town. And right. then like um, – you know, and he was clearly marrying someone who was gorgeous mm. for a lot of money. And mm. ooh. and then, no, he was like, you know what? Live. Live's the thing, people. Live. They had a spark. He had a, he had an encounter, a chance encounter on a cruise mm. ship. By the way, this is not the Valentine's Day episode. I'm uh, sorry to focus <laughs> so much on the romance. It's, it's actually our New Year's episode because, yes. if I'm not mistaken, they kiss on New Year's Eve. <laughs> is, is that right? On the boat? I don't think it's New Year's Eve. Mm, isn't it? Uh, no, no, I think it's just basically the boat is coming into dock and the relationships and friendships that have formed on this, however long the trip is be- from wh- wherever it was they went, this yeah. European tour, so it, yeah. a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. I, Do you know what I mean? Okay. You know, you, you're 
okay, this is the way I see cruise ships. You are effectively trapped yes. on a fairly small, like, in a fairly small space yes. with a bunch of other people. Right. Who are you, you are going to be forced to interact with and deal with and pretend to be friends with. Right? This is why I don't waters. do cruise ships. Same. I mean, I couldn't <laughs> think of anything worse, frankly. The, the cabin, that that kind of thing, you know, stopping in different places, yada, yada, seeing lots of things. But then you still have to interact and deal with all these people and go to dinner with yes. them and then and have conversations I'm unlikely to want to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, some people love all that crap and are genuinely nice human beings, unlike myself, and are sociable. Um, and, so, <laughs> you know, they may form actual bonds. Yeah. And, you know, the whole kind of last night on the boat, old Lang's eye, Yada mm-hmm. yada. I think that's probably why you thought it was New Year's Eve. I think the internet told me this as well. And also the fact that they say they're going to meet in six months, which is in July. July. So. I didn't pick up on the fact okay, that okay. it was New Year's. Well, this is. Because there was no, there was no crazy celebration. There was no balloons. There that's was what nobody I thought, like. From what I can remember. That's what I kind of thought. But uh, can we, just for the sake of the episode, pretend that there, sure. this happened on New Year's? Yes. No. <laughs> Catherine. Catherine's canon only. <laughs> Get your head cannon out of here. <laughs> I want it in the text. God damn it. I don't know. I'm with, I'm with Trisha. I'm, I'm, I want to be a belligerent, difficult woman. <laughs> Congratulations. I just want to be a demanding woman. It. <laughs> What's that? I just want to be a demanding woman. <laughs> I demand sure. the best. I'm sure. Princess Megan has a podcast for that too, right? Yeah, she does. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So we're on a boat. Listen, yes. let's meet our characters. Yes. Carrie Grant. We remember Carrie, right? Yes. We've seen Carrie mm-hmm. in North by Northwest. Is that that's the only Grant movie I think we've like watched? That's the last one. Okay. So this is a two years before North by Northwest, just to contextualize the, mm. the period. Uh we're on a boat. He is playing Nikki Ferranti, who is something of a debonair playboy, right? He's not known as a ladies' man. Mm. If you see the question marks over my head, that's me just yes, like he, verifying. Yep. Yes. Okay, great. Great stuff. Uh, um, he It was sort of opened up with um, international news talking about his recent engagement to a millionaire. Yeah. Lois, right? Mm. Lois. I said yeah. Harris, but yeah. An but her heiress. name, yeah. Lois the heiress. Uh, uh, um, but like, that's such a... A weird thing that they'd open up with, like, international playboy, Nikki Valenti. Yeah, I mean, this is, he is, uh, he's like a national figure. He's, people are, he's are frothing he's at like the he's mouth. Like, news, the yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's on this ship, uh, and he's, you know, presumably hoping to get away from it all, but mm. also needs to visit his grandma, too. Stay tuned. Grandma, right? Grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Mm, nice. Mm-hmm. South of France, right? Absolutely. I recall. Yes. I recall. Maybe I did see this movie. <laughs> and he is, uh, I mean, everywhere he goes on this ship, people are gawking at him and pointing and trying to get a piece of his attention and all this. And he is not into it. Uh, but he is, however, into Deborah Kerr playing Terry McKay, mm-hmm. who is a singer. Yes. Correct. A Ding. night a nightclub singer. Ding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, we see that in the second hour, so I felt pretty confident. Well, she was yeah. uh, until, until we learn that she got basically picked up and put in a uh, an apartment by a well to do man. Ken. Who is basically training her to be a wife. Uh-huh. He is educating her. So he's, he's like, you know, you are too nice to be in a place like this. What you want to be is in a penthouse on whatever avenue it's overlooking pretty, mm, pretty whatever. Good. Yeah, the amazing and, view, right? Uh, Where do I yeah. find one of those? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, cruise ship. Get on a cruise ship. No, but, no, no. Actually. I mean, also, isn't it like da- da- damn creepy? Yeah, like, and, and the whole kind of like, oh, and then, you know, I got an education, you know, arts, music. Yeah. Um, so, you know, 
I oh, he paid think. for her education? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that I remember this. She could be like a... He groomed her. Perfectly charming wife. Into we are in the exactly. 1950s. It yeah. was all exactly. reasonable yeah. behavior of like the I'm time. Like, I'm so surprised. Yeah. Right, so, yeah. I mean, it sounds amazing, yeah. but it's a real... Admit, that's yeah. a real creepy <clears throat> package, I think. Mm-hmm. You know... What, that's what um, she said. Yeah. <laughs> I should have said this earlier, but... Um, <laughs> More confessions. Okay, what could this be? Confessions. No, not, not a confession. Um, do you know they remade this movie in Bollywood? Uh, I was not aware of no. this. What is it under two hours long? It is not. It is two hours and 43 minutes long. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, okay. And I watched the first 20 minutes of it. Yeah. And it was ridiculous. Okay. Um, so, you know as Bollywood has known to do, it kind of, you know, made this movie worse. Padded out a little bit. Yeah. Did it okay. start on a boat? Yeah, yeah. It didn't start on a boat. It started with um, an opening scene with the lead actor, who is the guy who played in Lagan, Amir Khan. Oh, okay. He's he, good. He's good. Did he direct it? No. Okay. But this was his early stuff. So it opened with like him doing a dance number to show that he was a playboy. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Entry. Yeah. Entry. Heroes. He was feeling kind of filmy, yes. you might say. Yes. Okay. Oh. Okay. Cool. Checking out cool. some cool. gates. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they get to the point as they're pulling into New York Harbor where. They realize they're madly in love with each other. They cannot continue on in the current situations that they have set up for themselves with their irrespective millionaire partners. Now, Carol, I'm going to stop you here because this is where I started watching, basically. Oh, uh, good. It's okay, right around go. here. So I would like to state for the record that I have seen the thing I'm going to talk about next, which is this is a nice scene between the two of them trying to sort out like... so Their plan. So you're... Your guy, you you love this guy, you know, and they they just go through this whole thing and kind of hive mind arrive at the same conclusion, and they start doing a sort of like back. It's like a backdoor conversation, right? It's like I'm saying one thing when we're filling in the gaps together, mm-hmm. that sort of thing, and uh, you know, if we were to. But what you know, if we were to be together, how would that what would that look like? You know, mm-hmm. how does that come together? I guess I, Nikki, would have to probably get a job, right? You know, like we'd have to figure out our lives. And she's like, Yeah, we probably would have to do that. And they they decide to make a, a go at it. And as they're pulling into the harbor, what should emerge thrusting into the sky but that mighty New York phallus, the Empire State Building? <laughs> I think at this point, still probably among, if not the tallest building in the world. Yeah, and there's nothing around it either. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it's very showy about it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, right right now, I mean, it's like squished in with other things around it. But like back very then, nice, then, very nice nothing. shot of of the the rare great background shot. I mean, they're clearly in front of a projected background of New York seen from the harbor. And as they're talking... It emerges from behind another building and they look mm-hmm. over and see it. And it's like, yes, okay, 102nd floor. We'll see you there. Uh, six, six months. Six months, yeah. Six months. We get our shit together. We so figure this out. July. We'll see you there. Before we continue onward to the point where I actually have notes and things to say, mm. are we missing anything else crucial from the first hour of this movie? I think there was, um, I don't know, I can't remember again if it's in the first or second, but there were one or two like, Types of smoking, like plenty of types of smoking yes. for sure, for sure. Ashtrays, a like, plenty. <laughs> yeah, lots of ashtrays. Actually, even on the boat. Oh, definitely. Yeah. People, I mean, I people guess smoking like, all over the place. Case. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's right. He's constantly in need of a cigarette. Yes. He can't find them. She's always giving them to him. Um, do we actually ever see him light up? Though, I mean, I'm not sure that we do. Um, I don't. Th- that's okay. Mm, I don't I know if we like do. I feel like he lights one mm-hmm. for her. That's possible. Because like, mm-hmm. there's because at one point I remember like here have a cigarette and I was like oh that's a post something kind of like I remember having that comment in my mind but I just don't remember. <laughs> 
when or where it well, happened or yeah. <laughs> may not even be this film. Well, look, I will say. <laughs> may not be. Did he, did he exactly. say it in front of the World Trade Center? No. no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, look, I will say I did I did a, a, a very light amount of research into Cary Grant okay. real quick because I was curious. Do, I, I, don't, I don't think we talked about this, but he was a real advocate of LSD usage oh, uh, in the late 1950s. Yeah. Did you not know this? No. He he was working with a, a psychotherapist who was would dose him and he would kind of oh, explore the jungles of his mind. He did this apparently over a hundred times. He tripped balls <laughs> and was very uh for for much of his life until he was much older, I guess, very pro like, yeah, you should you should do it. Yeah, explore who you are, you know, go in the jungle of your mind and all this. And he I mean, but late fifties, like that's, that's pretty yeah, good. That's I mean like, yeah, this yeah. is when it's legal. It's just yeah. lysergic. It's a you know People, doctors have access to it um, before the man shuts it all down, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he was into uh, expanding his mind in all of this. But As I, we all should be. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Here we are, 21st century guys. <sighs> Listen to Cary Grant from the late 50s. But I also picked up some trivia. Number one, he was obsessed with tanning. He was always oh. tanning. Well, he is mahogany. He is. Yeah. He really yes. is. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. He and um, what is the guy from the summer movie? Oh, my God. I'm George. No. Who am I thinking of that's extremely tan? That I, oh, George movies. Hamilton. Yeah. Yes. George Hamilton. They are the yeah, same right. color. They yes. are the same yes, leathery color. It is mm-hmm. a deep, rich, lustrous leather color. But also, he did not, he was very uh, self conscious about, about his appearance, which is why he's, you know, very late middle aged man here, still looking pretty, pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but he did not like to be photographed smoking. He was very oh. self conscious about this image wise. Okay. So maybe this is why he, there's a lot of. He sounds like a fucking um, pain in the ass. Fondling of yeah, cigarettes. he's doing business with it, but he's he's not no. smoking. That's no. true. He sounds like a pain in the ass. I'm just going to say that. I've always loved Cary Grant like as an actor. Mm. I love his films. He's very charming. But as a person, he sounds like a fucking control freak, which is probably why he felt like sounds he was. a little fussy. To- Needed to drop acid because he is sounds extremely fussy and he's, he's a like little fussy man, right? Exactly, <laughs> and like you know, I just. Mm. But I'll tell you though, mm, uh, mm. Uh, so he fussy he may be, but the charm factor is is overwhelming because mm-hmm. another bit of light research trivia I picked up from a couple episodes ago: a uh, Bell Book and Candle, Jimmy Stewart, his role of. Shep Henderson was supposed to be Cary Grant, oh. apparently, or they wanted Cary Grant. And I think that would have been a way better. I think I mean, so too. Like mm. he would not have sounded like whatever this guy sounded like in that movie. I, 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 I like that, that. this is what you're talking about. Hello in there. Let oh us in God. to the, I think the I witch club. I think I would have rather I, seen I, Cary Grant. I think there's music. Barefoot <laughs> than right. <laughs> whatever. Let's put it this way. I am pretty Back sure. Back on the rug again, playing with a pussy. That, right. <laughs> if I had ever met these men in person, in when they were like alive and well, that they would probably have twelve-year-old yeah. fart jokes and just be sex addicts, and like I would be totally <laughs> turned off and be like, you know what? I really only want you when you're scripted. I nice only want of all you. Mailed them by the way. <laughs> really, only want fart jokes and <laughs> sex addiction. Right. Like, yeah. And they're, yep. a, you know, I'm just saying, I'm like, yeah. I have a feeling I would just be incredibly disappointed. Not just men. I mean, just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. You know, I'm it's disappointing. I have, a I have n- What's happening here? I have no illusions anymore. It's just a, like lifetime sort of realization. Sort tribal art like, these ugh. days. Where's my mother? I'm late for lunch with my mother. <laughs> they're all obsessed right? with their mothers. It's fine. Yeah. Or grandmother. Or grandmother. Because they're all man babies. All of them. Mm-hmm. Or man grandbabies. <laughs> or man grandbabies. That's fine. Where's my grandmother? Oh my God. I'm tripping balls right now. I'd like to know where she is. I mean, I'm sure, like, come on, James Call Bond. Call my mother and my grandmother. Huh? <laughs> James Bond, same thing, whatever. No, yeah, none of, of, none of you can be trusted. They made a whole movie about how he was a man baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no time to die? Skyfall? Skyfall. 
Oh. <laughs> Actually, now that you mention it, they're all kind of about his man babiness. <laughs> Even Spectre, where it's like, yeah, with like him and his issue Hello, with Judy James, Dench. it's me. Remember your brother? We used to go skiing together, and we've never gotten over it. <laughs> that's exactly. not how Christoph Waltz sounds. No. Actually, that's a bad. <laughs> that's a really, we'll, we'll we should try that, that one. Maybe practice that a little bit. <laughs> No, just don't. I I'm actually... the author of all your pain. So, closer? I feel like that's closer. I'm the author of all your pain. Oh, boy. It sounds like a German Alfred Hitchcock. That's, well, <laughs> uh, that's kind of what he was doing, though. And Stavros Blefeld. No, that's too English. That's, I'm the author of all your pain. It's, no, he are you Australian? <laughs> just kidding. Nah, you do nah, such nah. a good job. Nah, mate. <laughs> On the author, all your pain. <laughs> what? Cockney? No, Cockney. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, Justin, we have to finish the second half of this movie. That's right. Let's get to it, right? <laughs> we don't have a lot of material because I just shut down all of it. Man babies and... <laughs> okay, let's listen. We're back in New York City, you yes, guys. Yes, we Remember are. Remember the city. Justin's favorite place in the world. We love it. We love New York in the 50s. It's the hub of everything. And if that's not been proven to you in the previous 27 movies that feature New York City, <laughs> there's one more. <laughs> so we're getting a lot of that. So these two, they have a plan, right? They have a scheme. They've got six months to get their shit together. This is a nice time frame. I like this. This is good. So first things first, what do you got to do? You got to deal with the, <laughs> these fiancés of yours or right. your betrothed, right? Or your groomer or whatever. So we meet them. So as they're about to make their way down the gangplank, uh, back to the city, they're hanging out as people were want to do at the time. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on. There's no... Um, internet. So there's nothing to, there's no scrolling mm. going on or anything like that. They're just like, we're going to stand on the edge of the ship and wave at people. That we don't know. Right. Just Selfies. keep waving. Selfies. Look at yeah. me coming into port. Right. <laughs> now, in this case, we know a couple people because they see their beloved, yes. quote unquote, right? And, uh, and they then they see each other seeing their beloved out on the the pier, right? So there's a lot of eye action. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot of a lot of glances, a lot of wayward glances, even. So we and get to rest, see and the rest of the ship uh, compatriots looking back and forth between the two of them. Yes, yeah. just watching like, like this. They're watching tennis. Like yeah, oh, because there's laser heat action there. You guys, is you there? Feel it? I don't. St- yeah. Uh, you don't think that there's laser heat between the two of them? It was a little tepid. I feel like they were doing a good job of pretending like there wasn't. I will. I will say that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think because they, they were they were trying to keep it under wraps. Yeah. I yeah. thought the sexiest part is when they were praying in the chapel. Oh yeah, the chapel scene. I do remember that. That was odd to me because it kind of went on forever, right? Like we just sit there while they mm-hmm. pray together. Mm-hmm. That, that's it, right? Mm-hmm. That's like as mm-hmm. intimate as we actually kind of get in this movie. Mm, yeah, it's a spiritual intimacy. Interesting. It's a tender um, spiritual intimacy. Yeah. Well, so uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of like on-screen kisses, Mm-mm. or they're kind of a little hidden. They're all sort of a bit because yeah. I, I think because they're trying to stolen hide from, kisses hide, exactly. They're mm. hiding from the people on the boat, so that it. It's kind of like they hide them from us as well. It's, it's kind of like some cute little things. Yeah. And then he does give her a smacker at some point um, before, like. New Year's. Before they actually get off <laughs> Pretty the sure boat. it's New Year's. The internet says it's New Year's. Right. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I mean, they had that cute. <laughs> it could be, but they, were, they didn't feel. <laughs> Catherine, didn't you said feel. no, and you said it definitively. No. In my brain, it is not, because it's not a New Year's Eve party. It's it, not fancy enough. If we fi- if we prove it to be New Year's, can you change it in your brain? No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's, That's not fair. what a New Year's Eve party That's looks right. like. And you are uh, living up to your archetype of being a, what, a horrible woman? Difficult. <laughs> a demanding, well, difficult. No. <laughs> Maybe I am. Who knows? No, no, no. Nick is sitting in, with Lois. Lois has invited him. She heard that he's back in town. You're back in town. How away. are these people still single? Why did they not move on with their lives? That's a great question. I mean, I guess... I mean, they, and these none guys of them are, are vengeful, like exes. 
That's true. They're very well behaved mm, yeah, exes. Because, I don't understand. Because, you know, you get the feel when she invites him out to this that she wants to get things cooking again. Like, uh, as opposed to Ken, who's sort of like, oh, happy to see you and hope you're happy. I feel like Lois is she's oh, definitely. exploratory, right? She's right. checking she's out. She's definitely the, missing him. Yes, yes. Well, you know, he, don't make any plans after the ballet. Mm. Wah, wah, well, he wah, went wah, off wah. to the south of France. So yeah. maybe he just came back in time for Christmas. Yes, that's what we're led to believe. Yeah. So she's she's excited. But then at the end of it, after... So, okay, there's an awkward moment where they, sp- they spot each other and just say hello and then move on. And, um, and Terry's very sad about it. And Nick is very kind of confused and annoyed by it because he doesn't know the whole story, right? But then afterwards, it's very clear between Nick and Lois that... They both know that there's not going to be anything happening, and they just handshake goodnight. She drops them off and handshake goodnight, which is the clearest sign that nothing's going to happen there. Meanwhile, Ken is like, hey, Terry, why don't you just tell him what's going on with you? Because we do get the reveal at, at the ballet after she leave, after he leaves that they bring in the wheelchair, and it's a real like, bum, bum, bum. And she says, no, she doesn't. She, she's not going to tell him. She's not going to take Ken's money. He's offering to pay for physical therapy and all the, you know, the doctoring that she needs. And she's like, no, I have to do this under my own steam and I will walk again and I will walk to him. And that's when he will see me, you know, yeah. and we will get it together. She's determined. Yeah. Which is, look, I also agree that it's kind of all things considered with these very sophisticated adults living their sophisticated lives that like, maybe just, you know, have a phone call and, and talk about it. Like, I'm so sorry, this crazy that's thing happened. the great sacrifice of love, isn't it? It seems needless here. I, I agree. Just, just talk about Which it, Which is you why guys. I don't buy these movies. I understand. And it's a very calculated set of circumstances here. But th- that is uh, her deal. And so... <laughs> We then check up with Terry again, who she she's with the doctor now wearing a, a three piece gray suit, uh, but still very gray, uh, still a doctor, though. And he is doing a, a little checkup on her at home, her new house. She is not in the sweet high rise penthouse anymore. She is in a lower level, you know, like the stairs, right? Like it's her, her situation. She needs to be low, close to street level, right? Mm hmm. Anyway, he's like, you can't go uh, coach the kids through their Christmas concert. And we, the audience, are like, well, great. We don't have to watch a Christmas concert. Except we do because the kids show up and they rush right into her bedroom. And I wanted to point out, first of all, again, the Christmas tree in the background. We're going to see more of it later, but it's pretty good. It's a good Christmas tree back there. But also, this is Norman. He is one of our African-American characters. And not only does he get a name... He gets it's a line. Yep. Lines. A lines plural? I think so. Yeah, probably. And also, the doctor is touching him. He has his arm around him. Physical contact. I mean, that's very, we haven't seen that yet. But we, like that kind of like, oh, yeah, you are a human being and I will embrace you as, uh, you know, a brother, a, you know, a, a human being, a fellow human being, right? But do you so, remember what the lines were? Yeah. Remind me. So I he was he was saying something to the doctor, but he refers to the doctor. I can't remember exactly what. Oh, but he, he refers oh. to the doctor as Doc, and then the father is like Norman. Doctor, yeah. Um, and then he says the whole thing again, and then says Doctor, and then kind of bows. He bows. He does bow. Yeah, yeah. It is again. Mm, it's very yeah, thanks, mixed. Thanks for trying. Yeah. Good try, but, everybody. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna laud this the same way I no. will laud the uh that funny feeling police officer at the end of that movie who's just a police officer who happens to be a black man and there's nothing else attached to it. This has things attached to okay. it. And again, a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. So anyway, we then have to endure these kids singing at her bedside. There's one more kid I want to point out. His name is Tyrone, and he's wearing an old-timey World War I uh, aviator cap, f- complete with goggles, uh, which is, we will have seen this in A Christmas Story. I believe one of Ralphie's friends wears the same thing, except mm-hmm. that was like 20 years before this. Uh, anyway, this kid is still dressed like a World War II flying ace, and he's even got his uh, his seal leather jacket on and everything. And it's a great look. But this guy has also got a leather hat on beneath back there. 
these kids in their their little adult outfits are something else. Anyway, they do some singing. She is happy, but also sad because, because here we go, guys, the big finale. Now, uh, we see Terry being sort of set up by her. This is a landlady. Uh, so I learned today, I'm looking, looking her up. Uh, they, she's being set up on the couch of her very humble little apartment, uh, complete with blankie and a phone and a nice book to read and plenty of ashtrays. And the landlady we have seen before, I recognize this lady. Carolyn, do you recognize this lady at all? Um, yeah, I did, but I I had a difficult time figuring out. Oh, she was one of Luther Heggs's fellow okay. boarders. boarders. I was like, I've ah, yes. seen that face. Okay. She had plenty of spunk. And would talk about the organ being played. You mean you've heard him play? Like she was talking about hearing the organ and everything. So her name is Jesslyn uh, Fax, F-A-X. And she's from Canada. And that's about all we need to know about her. That's about as deep as we go. She's also in Alfred Hitchcock's rear window. So mm-hmm. let's when, our, when we get around to that, let's keep an eye out for her. She plays a great older lady. And she's about to leave the apartment, uh, leave Terry to her nice lonely Christmas on the, on the sofa. And she opens the door only to find Cary Grant is standing there. And he is like, is this where Terry McKay lives? And he looks inside and he sees her and he kind of trails off. And these two finally are back together in the same room, mm. back to having layered conversations, shall we say, mm-hmm. because they, you know, they don't make too big a fuss out of it, but he does start talking about like, yes, you know, I just, so, you know, I didn't, I didn't go to the Empire State Building. So I'm sorry to have left you up there. You know, I hope you didn't have to wait too long. And she's like, yes, oh, no, I waited, you know. How long did I wait? And he's like, well, I mean, all night through, you know, through, a, through a, yeah, midnight thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty bad. And he doesn't know at this point. She's not getting up off the couch. Well, we don't know that he knows. Actually, we find out that he does know at this point what's going on, or he has some inclination of what's going on. And there's just sort of a very awkward catch up between the two of them. And she basically tells him, look, there's a reason and I can't talk about it right now. There'll be no more questions. So please. Yeah. Stop asking me. And he's just sort of like, what the fuck? You know, like, uh, okay, okay, fine. And then she offers him a cigarette Mm. from her fancy glass cigarette case. Um, Again, this is a better view of a very sad Cary Grant in front of this Christmas tree. Again, a shorter tree, but you know what? Some gifts under there. Mm-hmm. Yet again, laden with tinsel. More tinsel than you can imagine. Anyway, this is the look of a man who just can't figure out what the fuck is happening. Like, what? what is the deal? You are right here. I'm right here. What is going on? She can't talk about it though. So she hands him a cigarette anyway. And I just wanted to point out this box. I, I, be, I believe it is glass or uh, I don't believe loose sites mm-hmm. around at this time, but very fancy. Also, let's do an ashtray count. By the way, uh, because we have one back here, one, and we have one here that he's dropping the unlit cigarette into, number two. And then in a different shot, we see that number three, because it's like, well, where's she going to smoke? There's a table here. I don't really see an ashtray necessarily, but it turns out that that ashtray is on this table here behind the sofa. Mm. So three, three ashtrays. Ah, 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 ah. (laughs) And so as this is winding down, he's like, well, you know, I, uh, I sold a painting and, you know, I had a painting in a gallery and the gallery guy, Uh, he gives her the shawl first. And then that's what, triggers that conversation oh that's right yes yeah. yeah so he delivers the shawl yep. from grandma's villa and she kind of reads between the lines well she says oh that's why my letters came back yes yeah right yeah right and and then it, we, it, the news comes out that some uh a woman has come into the gallery is uh taken a, a fancy to one of his paintings of a, of a woman and apparently 
purchased the painting. Very exciting. But also she was dot, 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 no. kind of trails off. She didn't purchase the painting. She didn't have any money. And this is how he figures out she can't walk because you can tell that he's about to say, and she was you yes, know, exactly. either disabled well, or in a wheelchair or she couldn't walk dot, dot, or dot. whatever. Right. But he does, you're right. He does say like, just give it to her if she likes it that much or something like that. Right. Isn't that the, yeah. Cause he, felt he couldn't take any money for it anyway. Right. And so at this point he then kind of, he's like sort of headed out, but then he kind of storms back in through the apartment and then just makes his way over to her bedroom and lets himself in. And but that's there it how is. he realizes that she can't walk. The uh, because because she doesn't follow him or stop him. No, no, because, because he, you do he it. Ha- she has she has the painting. This is what I, this is what I know. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I got yep, it. I got it. This is yep. what I'm saying. Is that like he? Yep. He knows that she can't. But walk the whole at, yeah. But the whole reason that that story I think stuck out to him. Not only was it a painting that he really cared about, didn't want to take money for it. You know, he was told the woman that came into the gallery didn't have money for it, and that mm-hmm. she also couldn't walk. So I don't know whether they said, Hey, she's, she was disabled or she was in a wheelchair or what, but that's the whole dot, dot, dot. So then when he puts two and two together, storms across the apartment, looks in the room and sees it. He's like, Oh my God, this is, she's the one that can't walk. I don't think he's as surprised as maybe I, you think he. No, I think thinks. he is. Yeah, I no, think he, he is. is. He, he really hasn't put it together before. He hasn't put it together he, until oh. that no, moment. No, not at all. Because he's he's still a bit kind of. I mean, he's on edge. He's, mad. I mean, he's still being very very polite, but he's mad still. Yeah. Yes. You don't think that, I mean, the fact but that she he, just doesn't get up from that couch no, at all? No, no, no. I don't think he's picked up on that at all. No. And because she was I've, sitting down at in the theater, and so how hmm. would he know? Uh, so for him, he only puts it together when he sees that she's the one with the painting. So yep. therefore, when he goes back to the couch and he's like, oh, my God, why didn't you tell me? But yes. what? But why would he be putting it together when he's storming across the apartment to find he, the he's painting? Beginning, he's beginning to realize. Yeah, yeah. He, I, he didn't only know at that what point, he he's beginning to suspect. He's that like, she maybe he is at painting. that point. She hasn't, she hasn't got up off the sofa. Okay, this is interesting because my- So I think it, it's literally in the, these like few- We're that, seeing that him figure it out. When he was like about to leave and he's just telling the story and then he's like, hey, you're, you're seeing This is sofa. also you when like Rita Wilson uh, cries about this entire scene when she retells it in Sleepless in Seattle. Okay. I mean, I'll take your word for that because it, it's been <laughs> oh probably 25 years since I've seen Sleepless in Seattle, so- <laughs> right. That could be. Uh, this is interesting, though. Uh, we're interpreting art differently, you guys. I think it's because you it's fell asleep you. in the first half of the movie. No. So <laughs> Listen, you, you, I admit, you were not paying attention. <laughs> Listen, I lost the, a lot of the first half of the movie. I, I admit <laughs> to that. I copped to that right up front, you guys. I put it on Front Street. I know, but, but therefore, I don't now think that, like, you're understanding the impact <laughs> of he. Go back and watch it. Yeah, he I doesn't put two back. and two together. Shushma, until you agree that I agree with you, them. With yeah. them, yeah, absolutely. I think he has some inkling no, of he has understanding. No idea. I think he's still mm-hmm. trying to put it to all together. But I think he is like, well, I'm going up there. There's a chance that she might not be able to walk. No, no, no. no. You don't he think doesn't, so? No, he doesn't know at all. It's a, he's about to leave, and then and he then starts saying, yeah. and it's, he starts realizing and being like, mm. yeah, there was a there was As a woman, starts, there was okay. a young yeah. woman who had no money. She and she could couldn't. She, dot, she dot, saw dot. in the painting and what I he's hoped like, you and, would see. Uh, yes, yes, mm. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And it's not, not until it. I mean, it's got- not until he turns around from this that he's like, "Oh my god, you're the woman who can't walk." Meaning, okay. "Oh my god, you can't walk." Hmm. I mean, I, I I agree that he is is surprised and happy and all the things when he discovers this painting. Because then it comes uh, out that that's why she wasn't. She tried to go and she got fucking hit by a taxi cab in New York City yeah. street. And my, I was just interpreting it as like, he's got some idea. He doesn't have proof though. Mm-mm. He's no. kind of waiting for like, you know, and it's the conversation, this very tense conversation goes on and she's just kind of sitting there Cause I, I being think like, I don't want to talk about things. If she hadn't have put the shawl on, he wouldn't have related that conversation as he was leaving. Mm, He'd have walked okay. out. He wouldn't have put it together. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So much suspense. It could be a Hitchcock movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All in the last three minutes. All right. 
<laughs> well, look, I mean, this is why you got you got to watch the whole movie, right? Yeah, right, Trishma. I mean, right. you and me, we got to mm. get to sh- get our shit together. Uh, anyway, I watched this movie. They- <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Justin, you're the only one that's confused about how this ending is playing out, and you're the only one that didn't watch the whole movie. Okay, so that's true. That's guilty. <laughs> guilty is charged. And then he leaves the apartment and they never see each other again. The end, right? I didn't watch the ending either. <laughs> no, no, no. They they get together. They make love. They yes. Well, they do you not. don't even know what that's she she that's says, cool. if you can learn to paint, I can, I can walk. Learn. Yeah. Anything can happen, and that's a beautiful sentiment. Mm-hmm. And that's where we leave them yes. together. Mm-hmm. And Calling each other darling. Yeah, darling. it's wonderful. That's an affair to remember. Woo! If you experienced it, you would remember it. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or you slip well, through it. This, this is, is what I'm saying. Yeah, you, you to sleep through. through. Sleeping through it doesn't count. Why would, he, why would he walk towards the door and then back into the room? He could have slowly slid towards the room to begin with. Why would he have done that? I'm not that? saying he knows for sure, but I, I'm just saying that my impression was that he had some kind of feeling, like there's something, there's something You're wrong. going <laughs> on just here. Wrong. He, did, he did get <laughs> that, but it wasn't until he was literally about to leave. And it wasn't until that he was happened. retelling the story about this painting yep. and put two and two together because he was about to say, and she couldn't, and she, couldn't she couldn't, and then he was I know, like, I thought he was baiting her there. No. Because then you could see the light bulb go off and he runs into the room and he's literally like, oh my God, she can't, she's, it's her. It's her. She's she's the woman. realized the world doesn't revolve around him. Mm-hmm. Something must have happened to her too. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> You guys are all teaching me something today. Good Jesus. stuff. I love it. Old movie time machine. You shouldn't watch the movies more often. We can do this. <laughs> uh, sounds great. I, I, I love it. It's a good, great concept. So look, here we are. The end of the movie. Controversial end to the movie. <laughs> and 2022. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> You can all, hey. Did Cary Grant know? Hey, you, uh, everybody get out, get, you know, you can bust my chops on social media, on the Instagram, right? You can get out there. We'll put up a poll or something like that of like, did Cary Grant have any inkling that she couldn't walk? And the last thing. Before you can, you, he entered the apartment, no. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. Agree to disagree. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but then how did he know where she lived? He, he, he explains he explained it. that. Oh, I missed that part. He was looking, <laughs> at the he, he was looking through a phone book. This is why you got to watch the entire movie, Shrishma. How many times have I had this talk with you? He was I looking up. Sleep at that part. He was looking up a Mc, Mc somebody, and he ran into a T McKay, and he took a flyer on the idea, and here she is. Hmm. Anyway, that's serendipitous. And that was the yeah. last time a phone book was useful. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right, let's do the business, all right? Mm. Catherine Sherlock. Yes. An Affair to Remember. Yes. 1957. Mm. Cary Grant mm. and Deborah Kerr. We keep watching this thing? Yes. Okay. Any particular reason? I think it looks great. Uh, I mean, I I think it's a well-told story. Uh, lose the kids. Other than, that, you know, mm. you do that and it's Kids great. are a big... Mm. It's a real drag. Yeah, it's a And there list. are other, other moments that get dragged out a little too long, a little too sentimentally mm-hmm. for my liking but okay. like okay. on the whole good very good okay okay Shrishma yes we keep it no oh <laughs> <laughs> No, I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't sure what that yes was because there have been times when I've you've said yes and I've said, "Well, do we keep?" It? And you're like, "Yes, yeah, I said I it." I gotta keep you guessing. Just okay, to... we'll stretch it. So we're not keeping this. No, it's just not my cup of tea. I would say. Okay. And then if they hadn't made this, they wouldn't have made the Bollywood remake, which was it horrible. Crushed you, yeah. Okay. I mean, not fair. Not fair to this movie, but right. I understand. Point taken. Like if it doesn't hold up, right. There, where is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Carolyn, Mm -hmm. an affair to remember, Cary Grant, Deborah Kerr, a bunch of LSD, 1957. Do we keep watching this thing? No, it's a no for me. I think that there are better versions of Mm. this kind of like melodramatic 
movie. And I've said yes mm-hmm. to them. Like, okay, mm-hmm. give me Peyton Place. I said yes to All That Heaven Allows. But this one, I'm like, oh, God, the kids and the singing. And it just is a very flimsy, like, unrealistic plot. And I, I was, I, you know, I don't know. That's totally fair. And... I'm inclined to agree with you now. I want to put a pause on my on the finality of my vote until I've actually watched the first hour of the <laughs> you in, can't a, do in, that a, in a concrete once. way. You can't change your well. Okay. Well, then <laughs> then I'm going to say it's a no. It's a no for me right now. I was going to say, do you even uh, want to watch the first hour? <laughs> <laughs> kind of because I do. I like. Look, here's the deal. I like them together. Yeah. Mm. There's just a bunch of nonsense around them yeah. and in their orbit that I don't really need. I think this movie, actually, Catherine, I hate to do it because you are the chief aesthetic officer, but uh, I don't think it looks really great. Mm-mm. I think we've seen better looking movies. I think mm-hmm. Best of Everything is a much more striking looking mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. than this, you know, different type of movie or whatever, but same era, same city. And just like, I don't think I was there for that one. I mm-hmm. found this one to be, you should check that one out. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, but this one is a little, it's a little flat to me. It's a little, yeah. it's a little uh, dusty. It feels yeah. they're, they're, Middle to late middle age and all of the cocktail party people around them and the club nightclub people, tuxedos, all the mid-century grandma rooms that we find these people in. It's real dusty. It's uh, it's real old. You know, it seems like yesterday's news mm. and therefore feels a little flat to me. Yeah. Um, Agreed. And while I'm a big, hey, guys, a uh, little secret about me. I love love. And I like it when people get together and it's great. And I love that they do end up getting it together. However that happened, however controversial the ending of this movie, <laughs> it is apparently not very controversial at all. But, uh, however they get it together, great to see it. And also I love the maturity of their exes and how they can yes, be friends and true. be supportive. Like Ken is, is like an ace friend, former yeah. lover friend. Like he's just like, go to him, girl. You know, like we can get this done. You should be with him. Just go talk to him. He makes a lot of sense there. He does. He does. He's also a groomer. So mm. the kids don't need it. And like I said, I would, I would love to take another spin on the goings on of the boat, but you know. And also the grandma stuff, even that felt a little long. The prayer, the intimate prayer they share together kind of just went on. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't. <laughs> so again, uh, you know, I think the, the the couple is good. Their romance is good. The movie itself, though, it's a no from me. Okay. And so concludes an affair to remember. All right. Okay. okay. And also, so concludes 2022 wow, with guys. Old Movie Time Machine. Wow. We want to thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, you know, we started this year. It's been a very long year of, of sp- spending two to two and a half hours in the 1950s, 60s, and 40s. And we have learned so much so far. Uh, but we appreciate your listenership and your support. Hey, throw us a review, right? Five stars. Yeah. Well, why not make it five stars, right? Five star review Six. would be great. Follow us on wherever you're getting your um your podcasts. Of course, join us on the Boom Room. Hey, it's still you know you're getting um you you just got a bunch of presents that you don't really like, so you can return those, take that cash, buy some merchandise over at the mm-hmm. T Public Store. Support old movie Time Machine uh, on our journey through time and or space and we will see you next year hey can you drop the new year's old lang sign like a good version of it like a good boozy end of night version of it sure oh yeah it's playing right now yeah okay. we've we okay. got it going right now <laughs> awesome. so on behalf of myself and Catherine and Shrishma and Carolyn and Woo-hoo. Brindis who also sends her love to all of you out there listener land uh, this has been Old Movie Time Machine, and I will throw it to myself in the future. Take it away, fella, and we'll see you next year. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Woo. Oh, wait, we got to do the countdown, right? Three, two, two one. one. Yay. Yay. Happy New Year. Yeah. I think they kissed on New Year's, Catherine. I'm pretty sure. All right, maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> Thank you so much, me from the past. Great job, team. And so concludes 
the year of 2022. Thank you so much on behalf of myself and the rest of the old movie Time Machine crew. Here's the deal, guys. We're going to take January off to kind of recharge, uh, make some further exploration. So we will see you back here on this feed Wednesday, February 1. And we will let you know what we're going to be watching for that week. We'll drop it on the social media or whatever. But we do want to thank you once again for having a great year with us. Uh, We really appreciate your listenership. Please write to us and let us know what you want us to talk about in 2023. The address is partyline at oldmovietimemachine.com. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. We call it the Boom Room. You can get twice the content that you get here on the free feed, and we would love to have you. And until February, you guys, be safe out there. Call your mother. And also, never forget, this has been Old Movie Time Machine. <laughs>